Okay, here are some more cinematic presentation tips. So as long as I've been presenting, I try to make a kind of a cinematic experience. And this, I first got started with this in high school in those days using 35 millimeter film and slides and two carousels by Kodak. And actually it was a really great experience. 2000 years later. And of course today we have these amazing screens uh, you can have just massive, super wide, really clear screens so we can do some really cool cinematic kind of kind of filmic things, even though we're using slides and, and on a stage. So Apple called this the Ken Burns effect with iMovie just because Ken Burns documentaries, of course, he doesn't have a lot of uh, film or, you know, motion pictures. So he had, had a lot of photos and he could tell great stories and make it seem like motion picture, even though what he's doing is just moving the lens around the photo. So this is a dynamic zoom, essentially what this is. And it's a very effective way to tell a story visually, but you're moving around the photo. So let's look at some examples here. So this is very much where you could apply just a, a more, what's called a morph in PowerPoint or a dynamic zoom. So that's what that is. It's not complicated. What that is, is just, there's the, uh, well, this is the original photo. This is a photo cropped. And then what we do, this is where we're going. So we choose transition and morph and then set the time. In this case, 12 seconds, that's a long time, but I know, for example, that I'm gonna be talking over uh, at least that long. So that's fine. And that's what I've done for these other examples too. To give it the more kind of filmic look, again, depends on the topic and really what you're doing, but. When you have images like this, it if you go slow, if you go too fast, it kind of loses that, that subtle feel to it. Sometimes it's appropriate to go faster when you're zooming in and out of products or something. Here's another one. So just a really slow, you know, because the presenter is talking at that time, talking about the art, well, in this case, probably talking about the deer uh, on this road and how the tourists interact with them and so on, whatever it is. Here's another example. This is just the crop version of the photo. And then we pull out to see the widescreen and it reveals something. So we don't really, we just see a sunset, but then we're kind of surprised. We pull back and here's the deer, the subjects here. Yes, and I'll show you how to do this text effect where you can remove the background and come up from the back. But I'll, I'll do that in another video. Let's look at another example. So let's say it's more business related. So we're selling boots. Let's say we're Patagonia or North Face and we're selling these boots, but we don't want to show both boots because let's say I'm talking about the upper, the uppers, whatever they call that, <laughs> of the, the boot. And then we want to talk about uh, the traction and the tread of the, uh, the sole of the boot or whatever you call that. So, right. So we focus on the, the left foot first and then pull back to, re to see both feet. It's just more interesting that way. Here's another one. So again, this is kind of a story. So here is uh, the backpack and this is pulled out. So that was just a crop image. Next slide, we pull out. And then since it's a very high resolution image, we can really crop in to different areas. And these are just different slides, but the morph goes in between them. So it gives a kind of an old Prezi effect where you can m move around. You have to let it move around. I stopped it there. It's kind of jerky. Right, and then we can pull back out to kind of see the big picture again. So it's kind of storytelling in a way that we start kind of pulled back. We go in deeper, look at different areas, and then pull back again to see the big picture. Here's another example. So let's say, again, we're like North Face or Patagonia or something. And this is a customer who sent in her photo in the Rocky Mountains. Here's the boots. They're doing a great job. And this is just a, a customer um, review or just a nice letter we got from her. And this is what she says. So we have a um, quote by the customer. Right, so there's Elsa Anderson, Boulder, Colorado, with her comments. So that's just one example. So you see, again, how we did that, it's just that's the original image, pretty high resolution image. And then we just cropped it. And then you put a morph here to pull back. That's the effect. You have another one here. And these are using AI images, which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of or not, but just for practicing, uh, it's, it's fine in this case. So let's say we're talking about um, forest bathing, uh, this idea that you can really benefit um, from the, the trees and the experience of hiking. So this is the original photo, but we can crop in 
and then also the text can be revealed. So that was the first slide. This is the, the second slide. And since the Xingling Yoku text is just part of the second slide, it's not an animation effect, it's just a transition, it's just a morph, as you can see. So there's the original, then we cropped in, and the text is there, so we didn't put an animation on it. Well, let's continue with that. Start, let's start here. And then we can keep going. And let's say there's the benefits of hiking in the woods. Something like that. So we're moving back and forth across, and then we can pull out again. Again, the presenter would be talking during this time. We're not just uh, sitting and, and watching the screen, but this is in conjunction with a presenter connecting and presenting to the audience. Okay, here's another example. So not so much of a dynamic zoom in the cinematic sense, but as a way to show, for example, products or just elements moving around the screen. So let's, again, that's a morph. It's just a different slide that had a Gaussian blur on it. And then we can bring in some products like that and they move around. So you could imagine showing books this way or anything. I'm not sure how we, I did this, but all that is, they're just different slides moving the objects around. And you can move it like that and have them disappear even. So all that is, you can kind of see from this one, I have to, and this is a really great feature of PowerPoint that Keynote doesn't have, is that you can really zoom out of the slide to see, and the slide is actually there underneath. But so our books are here on either side, and then you can see when we go to the next, they're there. So since there's, since there's a morph here, then they're going to have this uh, animation. All right, and let's do this one. Let's look at Mona Lisa. Same idea. This is a really high-res photo. If you want to know how, how high the resolution of your image is, you can just go here and go to size and then go to reset. Well, you can just read it. You don't have to reset it, but you can see, whoa, that's uh, quite large compared to what I'm using now. For example, if we, whoa, if we reset it, you can see it's quite large. But that's really good because that means we can crop in and move around to different parts of the slide. So this could be like for teaching art history or something, or it could be used for maps. But let's say, okay, here's Mona Lisa, and then let's move in. So again, it's a little bit faster than... Um, so it's not so filmic in that way, but that would just be too long. But we can really get in there to see the textures or, I don't know, if, if the person is talking about the rule of thirds or, or the golden mean. Um, but you, you can just see how you can move around. These are different slides, different parts. You could put text there, but I mean, this is just a way to look at the thing. Whatever the thing is you're, you're looking at is a way to zoom around it. Pre-planned. Again, this is sort of Ken Burns a style where he would focus, usually he would, or he would often start on the hands in a photograph and then move up and then pull out at the end to see the big picture. Again, you could use maps. So here's a map, we see Japan and uh, Korea and China over there, but we're focusing on Japan. So let's first, let's go up to Hokkaido and you can even move around. So here's Sapporo over here. I used to live over here for my, when I first came to Japan, I lived here. It's very countryside. Uh, a lot of snow up here, and uh, where I would go, it basically it would just go in these areas. Really, really uh, rural area, but a really beautiful area. But that, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, so just as imagine you can go down to different parts of any kind of map, and then you can go in sometimes and look around. Okay, so here's, here's uh, Nagoya, here's Tokyo up here, and this is where I am right at this moment. I'm exactly right there. Again, it's, these are just different slides, and then boom, we go over here. Of course, you can always go back and go back again to where we were, and then zoom out to see the big picture again, which is all done very smoothly. And you can have the animation or the, the transition effect be slower or faster as you like. Okay, I want to show you an example. This is the final thing, but here's a different way. It's not so much of a dynamic zoom effect, but it's... Um, a pretty cool effect that you can do as a way to be organized. Let's say you had kind of five parts of your presentation, or at least this chunk of your presentation, you have kind of five sections, or it could be four or whatever. But this is the topic, places to visit in Nara. And then this could be the five parts. So we just start here. This is hike over Wakakusa or hike up to Wakakusa, right? And then we talk about that. We could put in more slides and then we can go back. Right? And then number two is to explore 
Nara Machi, Nara Town, right? So we talk about that. You could add other slides if you want, then come back to this image and then back. And number three, let's go visit Hajo Palace. After that, again, this is the section. So we'll call this the, you know, the Daibutsu section. And you, again, you could have many slides after this, but if you come back to this and then we go back to this sort of main chunk sort of like an outline or an agenda. You could use this for an agenda. And then the final one is strolling down the street in a part of Nara Park. Okay, so in the examples I showed you, I didn't have other slides, but let's say, so this is the, the park one, I mean the uh, Wakakusa one, and then that comes out and becomes full screen like this. And then you can have a bunch of other slides in there, but make sure then you put that slide here again, because then that will morph right into this as you saw before and then just repeat that okay so let me show you how we did that so what we do make this slide a little bit bigger so here's our five so we had five images and then we just cropped them down to all be the same size so the first thing we do is we duplicate that then we're just going to make this one on the left the deer it's going to be the biggest so we take these four four make a little bit smaller to give us more space move it over to the side that's the direction they're going to go and then the deer is going to become bigger. And there are two ways that I often do it. You could use the crop tool and then just resize. Uh, you can do it that way. Uh, but I like to just see what I'm working with in terms of size. So you go to size and you can reset. You can see the original size here is written out, but you can just reset. Sometimes it's quite large and that's fine. So it's taller than it is wide, but be something like that. And you can look over here on the left to make sure yeah, that's how it's good. You see how it, on the left it just changes if I move things around. Okay, and then we put a morph on it. Yeah, morph is selected for two seconds and you see how that worked. And now we want to go back to the beginning too. So we just duplicate that so that you'll get this kind of effect, right? We'll, deer will come out as part one and then part two. We didn't do part two yet. So let's do that. We'll just do two of them. So the same idea, there we are, part two. So let's duplicate that. And for part two, part two is going to, or this one's going to get bigger. So we just take these three this time. And you can have them go any direction. They could go up and down all around. It uh, doesn't matter. And then the deer is going to be over here. So then go here, go to size, reset, make it a little bit tighter here like the bottom part go with that and then something like that and again I check over here to make sure it's okay yeah it looks okay I got the morph on it and then let's select this as well so we should be able to let's see if it works so now that should be number two which is you can see that I didn't put the text in here for these but yeah, that works, right? So that's how you do it. And if I wanted to do number three, again, I just duplicate. And then this time I would do just these two. Well, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. So these two will come over here and these two will go over here and then we'll resize this. Let's see what size we have to deal with here. And then put that in the center. Does it look centered? Yeah, I mean, it's okay. And then we got a morph on it. And then we can pull this down and that's what we'll go back to. So does it work? Yeah, you can see that was number two. Yeah, it works. So we just go back to this, play it full screen. So you can see, let's do this number three. Yeah, it works. Maybe we can slow it down. It's kind of, kind of fast, but anyway, that's how you do it. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next video.